What's up, baby? I'm back with another kick-ass monitor. This monitor, super cool, has at least three weird things about it that I haven't really seen too much before. Number one, it's a mini LED monitor, super fancy. Number two, it has a brightness of 1,200 nits. That's really bright. And number three, this is one of the first monitors, if not the first monitor to support Dolby Vision HDR, which is cooler than HDR10 that you might be used to. This is the kind of thing you get when you get like a workstation monitor that you would use for color critical work. So it just tells you how close to perfect all the different uh, colors are. So this is gonna be a very color accurate monitor. Guess this is the base, what is this? Oh, this is a shroud. This is a monitor hood. It's gonna unfold and go on the sides of the monitor so there's less glare and reflection. Just helps you to see the picture more easily. Asus VIP membership warranty thing. I'm never gonna read that. Whoa, this comes with a display calibration tool. I didn't know that, that's pretty cool. This is a Asus ProArt i1 Display Pro from X-Rite. A generic cardboard box containing, uh, I guess this could be a shroud to cover the IO on the back. A quick start guide and a bunch of cables. Looks like the base is assembled and there's this cable tie on here, which I assume most people aren't gonna get. That's just cause I'm special. Okay. Well, as long as it has, still has some stuff to peel, I'm happy. This has a pretty big wide base on it, which is nice for stability. This is a nice elegant stand. It's got this little curvature to it. A little nicer than corporate. I would call it executive. Okay, and here's the main event. I can already tell this thing is so thick. It's like, I'll tell you why. It's because it's HDR AF. High dynamic range AF. And a free boat. Uh... It's in. 32 inches. It's pretty big. You can see all these little badges here, basically showing off how awesome the color accuracy is on this puppy. So it's a true 10-bit panel. A lot of panels claim to be 10-bit, but what they really are is 8-bit plus FRC, which is frame rate control. It also says quantum dot technology, which means there's a quantum dot film in here, and that gives you really awesome colors and lots of them. And you need all that color accuracy if you want to have a wide color gamut for awesome HDR. Let's check out the back. I really like that gold, that looks sharp. Plug for your power cord, a switch, just like you find on the back of a PC power supply, a headphone jack, three HDMI 2.0B ports, not HDMI 2.1, which would be cool, but still too futuristic, I guess. A single DisplayPort port, but it's DisplayPort 1.2 instead of 1.4, which is a little disappointing on this monitor, but okay, we can live with that. Then there's two Thunderbolt 3 ports, these type C ports down here, and that's so you can pass through and daisy chain through this thing with Thunderbolt 3, which is pretty cool. Uh, and then we have three USB type A's over here, the regular kind, and a Kensington block. Pretty nice looking buttons. The feel isn't great, honestly. You can tell they're all kind of connected. They all move together. When I press one up here, you can see these other ones move. And then you got a joystick, which I always like. And this is a pretty nice, uh, some nice glyphs over here too. And of course, designed by Asus in Taiwan. Obvious Apple ripoff. A lot of vents here. See all this? For the airflow, because this thing at 1200 nits is gonna have a fat backlight. Look how thick this thing is. This is because it has full array local dimming, which means the backlight is behind the screen and blasting light that way. The reason it's cool that it's mini LED is that there's lots of different lighting zones. With LEDs that aren't mini, you might only have up to, you know, 384 lighting zones on a 16 by nine monitor. It was pretty normal for a while there. Um, but that means that the lighting zones are all about an inch by inch. So when you're moving your mouse around, you're gonna see a big kind of halo around the mouse, or if text comes up on the screen, it, it'll just have blooming white glow around it instead of being really sharp. But this with over 1150 lighting zones, they should be small enough to really mitigate that. So we're gonna check that out here. That's a pretty smooth adjustment. Got some pivot. Oh, sick. All the way to 90. How about the other way? Both ways and tilt. 
and swivel. Wow, that is a far swivel. Holy cow, this is sweet. And look how low it goes too. That is a grade A monitor stand. The things that excite me. All right, we're here, we're at 60 Hertz, we're at 10 bit color. Let's check with a menu. Blue light filter. Look at the colors in here. Brightness, contrast, saturation, hue, color temp, gamma of 2.2. Uniformity compensation, interesting. Dolby Vision is grayed out right now. Hmm. So this is one of the first monitors with Dolby Vision, which sounds very cool, but it's also a red flag because if it's the first, that means you're probably an early adopter, right? So right now, there's only two games that I know about that support Dolby Vision. Those being Mass Effect Andromeda and Battlefield. Not only that, you need more than just the monitor and the game to support it. You also need your OS, Windows, and you need your graphics card. It's pretty bright in here, so it's kind of hard to evaluate, but I can see some halos around my mouse but it's really small. It's basically like three millimeters on either side of my cursor has a little glow. Not perfect, we have to wait for micro LED or have an OLED monitor for that, but not bad. Darkest blacks compared to the brightest brights is quite a range. That neon sign looked totally lifelike. Look at the light hitting that balloon, that kid's firework over there. Yet I can still see different clothing in the shadows. That's awesome how it's kind of blown out on that bird. And it's so small. It's just on the bird's back. Pretty sweet showing in game, so let's check out some movies. That is max volume. Because there are two three watt speakers. Man, that light is so awesome. This movie really has awesome lighting. I love how there's just little bits of light just peeking through the shadows, little tiny glints off their armor and helmets where the rest is in shadow and dark. It's amazing, it's great. It's just, it's really good. There's a lot more to say about this, um, but this is short circuit. So if you want to learn a lot more about this, watch the LTT video that's going to be forthcoming. I mean, it should be great. It's 4,000 US dollars. This is a piece of equipment for professionals. It's not just for me to watch Dragon movies in HDR. So if you want to see a deep dive, hit us up on our other channel. Thanks for watching Short Circuit today. I hope you liked this video. And if you did, get subscribed, hit us up with a thumbs up and also, a comment because we'd like to hear from you. See you later.